Hi everyone, this is George Cow, and today I'm here with Jeanette Hill. I'm excited to be interviewing her. She is a member of my Master Heart Group Coaching Program. Hi, Jeanette. Hey, George. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. So Jeanette Hill is a spiritual medium and intuitive coach, and I'm going to read you her bio so that you have some context of our, of our conversation. She's going to share some of the lessons she's learned in building her business, and uh, she's also going to teach us a little bit about connecting with our higher guidance. So I'm excited about that. All right, so here's the bio. Jeanette Hill is a spiritual medium and intuitive coach who helps people gain clarity about their soul's purpose and to understand how spirit guides support them in their lives. Her work is about guiding others to feel more empowered through self-awareness and spiritual practice. She has a master's in transpersonal psychology and has trained in hypnotherapy, life coaching, energy therapy, intuition, and mediumship. Jeanette, thank you so much for being here. Appreciate oh, it. Thank you so much for interviewing me today, George. It's a real privilege. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's a lot you've learned as you've built your um, mentoring, healing, and coaching business. And one of the lessons is about, is about courage. Uh, so do you want to share more about that? Yeah, um, I think it takes a lot of courage to do the kind of work a lot of us do that are your um, in your program, because uh, years ago, a coach said this, I think it's so true, those of us that do this kind of work are really putting ourselves out there, because we really do this kind of heart centered work. And we have to be willing to be vulnerable, and not only take those steps to build our business, but really put our you know, our lessons that we've learned, our vulnerability, and really be willing to be authentic about that. And it takes a certain amount of courage to do that. It absolutely does. And I'll tell you, the, the I guess, fear or the potential fear, it, in my experience, never really goes away. Um, or that it's, it's, it's always a practice. Yes. And, and it's like, sometimes people have the sense, oh, you know, someone like George, who's already so established in his business, he must have no fear every day. No, it's, it's, you know, every time I, every time I make a video or mm -hmm. every time I create a course or every time I write a blog post, you know, there's still that sense of, well, maybe nobody will like it, you know, or very few people will like it. And mm -hmm. what if uh, it's a waste of time or whatever it is. And uh, yeah. So thanks for clarifying it, that, that, that you've experienced that and that you're, you're learning about that too. So how does that, how do you, maybe you could connect this a little bit to spiritual growth or, um, yeah, yeah. How, how does that, how does, how does building a business and the courage there connect with, with our kind of personal development? Well, to me, I think they're very interconnected um, because there are a lot of fears or anxieties that can come up around growing your business. Uh, growing your business really requires you to be, putting yourself out there and to be seen more. And as that brings up any kind of fears or anxieties about, you know, am I, am I enough? Am I qualified enough? Do I take, need to take another class? Do I know, you know, all those, that stuff that comes up, it requires the same tools and techniques like I used in my daily life that I work with with my clients. I'm using the very same things that I'm teaching um, you know, the meditation, the getting in touch with my feelings, my emotions, um, being aware of if my thoughts are kind of spiraling into a, in a negative pattern and bringing it back, bringing myself back into balance. Um, to me, personal development and spiritual development and growing your business, it really, really goes hand in hand because, and I really didn't know that when I was starting out, but it's really so true. It's just everything I do, like you said, every new thing. And right now my new thing is trying to go online. That has brought up some fears for me. Like, Oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm doing. I've got to make videos. I've got to do all these other things that can bring up that anxiety. And then I'm, I've, I've got to do the same thing. You know, I sit in the meditation or I, or I do the visualization or I read a positive book or when I'm exercising, I'm watching a positive video on YouTube or something. I'm doing the same things I would do in my personal life to grow my business, to keep myself inspired and to keep myself thinking positively. Mm. I like that. I, I, yes, absolutely. It is. I sometimes say that, you know, business is really just a stage for our personal evolution. Uh, you know, it's, it's like, 
it, it's, there's no separation. You know, the more we are willing and open to growing personally, uh, the more our business can grow because we're more willing to take risks or we're more, uh, right? Like we're, we're less um, dismayed by any kind of potential failures or things that happen that could be considered failures. Mm-hmm. You know? so, so yes, thank you for um, confirming that. Um, well, another lesson you've been learning is about, is about content, you know, and, mm-hmm. and how, the importance of that. And, and so tell us about your experience with it and any kind of uh, or words of encouragement you have for, for the audience about that. I would say it's a big thing I've learned from you is that consistency and the creating the content and then sharing, you know, the best of what you have and sharing um, kind of like bite size, you know, amounts, doable amounts. I have noticed the more I share, um, whether it's on my business page or, you know, things like that, um, if I put a live video on, there is more engagement and there is more feedback that I get and there it's just like anything the more you give out you know the more you can get back and it's it does require a consistency that I'm still to be honest working on but it 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 is all tied the more that you share the more that you put what you've learned I think people really appreciate it I think people appreciate and that's another thing I really like about what you do is even those short videos that you have um they're very inspirational they're very positive it helps you feel like I'm not alone in this. If I sometimes feel afraid or I'm so feel insecure in what I'm doing, you're you're like a cheerleader there, saying it's okay. It's okay to have that. <laughs> it's okay to think that, you know. Yeah. And um, before, I guess I wouldn't have thought of that as like content to share, you know, you as a business coach. But even those things that you share are very helpful, you know. In addition to those those longer classes that you teach that I sign up for. Um, it's all very helpful because part of it's the mindset too. You know, it's not just learning about the SEO or the Google or the website. A lot of growing your business is the mindset too of continuing to believe in yourself and, and feeling inspired and keep going, that persistence. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Uh, thanks for saying that. It's, I think all of us who are growing a business ought to think about, or, or I, I hope we can experiment with being open about our journey. You know, I think mm-hmm. that's, I mean, that's why I do these interviews too. It's like, I, hey, you know, everybody, everybody experiences challenges and, you know, the, the, the shyness of putting ourselves out there or, or the, you know, the, the challenge with consistency, everybody experiences that. And like when we're willing to talk about it, I think our audience, um, oftentimes comes to our support, you know, at the very least, they're like, Oh, you know, I can relate to you. <laughs> you know? And so it is, it is a, uh, an interesting, um, project to like, at the same time where we're sharing our expertise, think about how we can share the journey of our own development, whether it's our business development or whether it's our own soul's development. I mean, in your case, like, what are you learning about, you know, in, in your own journey of you know, mediumship or spiritual growth? Um, people can, yeah, I think people really appreciate, uh, that, that we're all a work in progress, that there's, there's more to come, you know? So, um, so let's, uh, switch gears a little bit. I I'd love for you to start to talk about this idea of higher guidance and how do we connect Mm -hmm. with that? Um, maybe you can start with describing what you mean by higher guidance and then kind of start to teach us some of the techniques for how to connect? Sure. What I mean by higher guidance, um, people can give it different names. To me, um, whether whether you consider that coming from your soul or your higher self Mm -hmm. or spirit guides or what you might um, consider a higher power, spirit, universe, God, whatever you you want to call that. To me, that all is higher guidance. That's that part of ourselves that is connected to unconditional love, into uh, belief in ourselves and others, the kindness, that joy, that peace. That's what I consider higher guidance. And I really started learning about that many years ago, um, about how to tap into that through what I call spiritual practices like meditation or journaling. Or another thing I do is I keep a dream journal, I keep track of my dreams. 
And I started learning from other people, first from like books and then eventually classes and things I took, how to recognize higher guidance as it was coming in. So through meditation, you know, we can get quiet, we can hear that inner voice or that inner, those inner thoughts or feelings that come in. But another way I learned was to recognize that sometimes in a kind of mundane everyday things. Um, but if we ask for that guidance, and then we listen and we create that space in our lives to be observant and listen, we can start noticing how guidance might come in. So um, I've had really profound kind of in your face examples of like years ago, listening to Wayne Dyer's, um, I was listening to a CD where he was talking about the Tao and right at the moment where he was just, you know, describing and kind of defining what the Tao is. And this is when my kids were really little. My son was a baby in the backseat of my car. I'm just driving on the, the highway, you know, and this Prius drives right by in the left lane and the license plate at that time was greater power greater power. And this was at a time in my life where I really needed to feel like there was some support, there were some big changes that we were thinking about doing, and I was asking for guidance. You know, I was asking for that support. So I felt really like in your face, like, wow, there it is, that, that's kind of cool, you know? Um, and then also there's just the subtle things like, it might be a book that you're guided to read that really speaks to, to something going on in your life. It might be, something as simple as like you're watching a television show or a movie or there might be a song that you you feel like you're really speaks to you or that you're hearing over and over in your life um some people really connect to, to numbers or to the animal world you know um there's just a lot of different ways that higher guidance comes in it it doesn't just come in through uh when we're sitting in meditation i think that's one of the best ways but there's a i really believe that higher guidance is in our lives every day, if we kind of become observant and create that space to notice. Mm. So um, that's one of the big things I encourage people to do in my work is not only to get to know yourself, but to start paying attention to how you receive guidance. So because I'm a medium and because I early on trained as an intuitive, um, I was taught to understand what we call things like clairaudience, clairvoyance, clairsentience, and claircognizance. And the clair is just about clear. So it's like clairaudience, how do I hear? Clairsentience, how do I feel? Claircognizance is like a knowingness. And then clairvoyance is like seeing. So sometimes we see literal things like that license plate on that Prius that drove by. And sometimes it's very subtle inner things that happen, like an inner feeling, or maybe you sometimes get like this inner daydream or inner picture, or you might just have this sudden kind of knowingness, this feeling like something just feels right or something doesn't feel right. Or you might just have like a physical sensation, or you might hear that kind of inner voice. You don't have to, you know, be a medium like I am. You can really tune into those inner senses because we all have them. And I, I really strongly believe we're all guided, we're all supported. It's just sometimes we're not aware, in, especially in this culture, it's so like a doing culture. And really I think what helps support and heal us a lot of times is when we can step back from the doing and just be and learn how to understand how we're being guided and supported when we're in those states of just being. Mm. How do, might one distinguish between higher guidance and our own thoughts? I mean, sometimes, uh, and, and, and maybe, maybe it's impossible to dis distinguish between the two, but, but if let's say someone was trying to make a decision about something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so how do you, how do you advise? I mean, I know there's probably different for everybody, but any kind of tips there about that? Well, first of all, I think our higher guidance can come in through our own thoughts. What I would distinguish is like years ago when I was first learning this, one of my teachers taught me to distinguish between higher guidance and like the ego or the personality self or whatever you want to call it. And so one way you can distinguish is our thoughts will often go in these kind of, you know, you've noticed they go in these cycles, these repetitive patterns, and it's worry, they're kind of scattered. 
What I've noticed through years of creating practice like meditation and quieting my mind more is higher guidance, even if it feels like it's just coming from me. And a lot of times it does kind of feel like it's coming from you. And then there are times where it feels like it really does seem like it's dropping in from somewhere else. But to me, the important distinction is that you feel a groundedness with it. You notice that the thought comes in, even if it comes in very suddenly, it's like a wise voice speaking to you. There's a, there's a, there's a clarity and a groundedness to it, kind of like a wise one speaking to you. It's not all over the place. It's not chaotic. It doesn't make you feel fearful or insecure or doubt yourself. It's like, what about this? And it, it's kind of like, that's it. You know, and there may not always be a lot of words. There may not be a lot of, and there isn't usually, you must do this, you must do that. It's more of a, what about this? Or what about this? Or, you know, perhaps this kind of a feeling. Does that make sense? Mm, yes. So it's like a voice of a, of a wise mentor who isn't like pushy. <laughs> yeah, or it, can, or it can be really specific sometimes. It's like another story sometimes I'll tell people is years ago when the internet was really new and I, Yellow Pages still existed and I was wanting to apply to go to art school. And it was back in the day where I didn't use the internet. It was a new thing and I just pulled out the phone book and I, I needed to get slides to you know, get um, photography slides made for a portfolio. I was like, I don't know how to do this. I have no clue what to do. And this thought dropped in my head out of nowhere, open up the phone book and look in the yellow pages. And I just started looking under photography and I made a few phone calls and they're like, no, no, I don't do that kind of thing. Or, you know, I'm just, I'm in a studio. I take portraits, whatever. Maybe like the fourth call or something, I get this man on the phone and he says, Oh, I think you've got the wrong, you know, this, I work for a processing lab. I said, Oh, okay. He goes, well, I don't know if I should say this, but on the side, I've kind of started this side business. We're in the basement of my house. I've started actually taking photographs that I, you know, make into slides for artists who need portfolios or need artist slides. I said, Oh my gosh, you're kidding me. So I met, you know, met this man, he was a nice guy. He was a family and everything. And, and uh, there he was in his home. He had this photography set up. So sometimes it'll drop in like a really specific thought like that, you know? Um, that's, that's interesting. And uh, I like that you didn't quit after the first call. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? That's the other thing. Like, okay, I'm going to keep going. And then, yeah. you know, by the fourth call, there was, there was some connection. Um, so uh, you mentioned meditation a couple times. Um, a lot of people do it in different ways, of course. Um, how do you do meditation or what is, what is a tip that you give your clients about that? Well, the biggest tip I give is to do what works for you. Mm. You know, I, I like actual sitting meditation and I'll do different kinds of meditation. Sometimes I'll do meditation where I try to um, just be quiet and I'll do a lot in the beginning with my breath, just, you know, releasing with the breath, just to relax. Um, sometimes I'll work with my chakras and just kind of clear the chakras. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes I'll do a, a visualization. Sometimes I'll do a guided meditation. But what I say with clients is do what feels right for you and what makes sense for you to do. Some people are very active and they do better with maybe a walking meditation. You know, that gets them to calm down. So some, maybe some people's meditation is doing music, is maybe painting, is maybe some form of exercise. Um, I don't know if sitting meditation is the right thing for every person, so I don't necessarily say do what I do, you know. I say do what feels right for you that's going to help you, number one, relax, you know. If you can just relax, that's the number one thing to help you get in touch with that higher guidance and who you really are is because when we're really tense or stressed, you know, we tend to go into our mind, we tend to go into the worry and the fear. And so the higher guidance is going to help. Uh, we're going to be able to access that better when we're in a more relaxed state. Yeah. Wow. I love that advice because so many people um, assume that you have got to be Lotus position, you know, Vipassana, you know, silent 
10 day retreat is the real meditation or something, which I actually went on and I, it was so hard for me. I don't think that's the right thing for me. Um, some people say that I meditate all the time or something, but it, it's, yeah, it's like, I, um, that's interesting that you said relaxation is really one of the key factors of whether or not it's working out for you. Um, so I'd love to, we have a few minutes left and I'd love to ask you about sort of the difference between what you do in terms of intuition and mediumship. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, thus far we've been talking about intuition mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. less. Mm -hmm. and, and let me actually ask you, do you help clients discover that way of meditation, so-called that's help that's right for them? I do try to help them figure that out. Um, you know, sometimes in coaching calls, we've done short minutes. I've, I've done short meditations or in, in the past when I've taught classes um, in person, I've done guided meditations with people. Uh, really though, I really do encourage people to try different things out until they find what works for them. So, so, you know, it's, that's, that's what the key, I think, to spiritualities, all of this is to find what's right for you. I think we really have an advantage. We live in an age where there's a lot of different choices that we have. So I really stress trying the different things, you know, maybe, maybe you like to, some people like to have aromatherapy, you know, some people like music, some people like need to really be out in nature. I don't think our higher power, whatever you want to call it, universe, spirit, God, whatever. I don't think that matters. I think what matters is what, what works for us, what gets us in touch with our own sense of peace and, and happiness and joy. Yeah. So that's, that's what I would say. Um, in terms of the difference between the intuition and the meditation. Or mediumship. Or excuse me, the med yeah, mediumship. Yeah. Is um, I initially started my, my business doing intuitive readings for people. Some people call them psychic readings. I don't call them that because I'm not, uh, I don't want to put the emphasis on like I'm trying to predict people's future. To me, it's really more about um, the soul and the growth and the life path and purpose and that type of thing. But the mediumship definitely builds and uses the intuitive or the psychic ability. But the difference is with mediumship is I am connecting soul to soul with those souls who have crossed over or, you know, passed to the other side or who are no longer in the physical body. That's the difference. Um, and so I am raising my vibration, my frequency, whatever, in to, to, to meet up with the higher frequency of spirit for communication for messages and, and to bring communication between that loved one on the other side and the client or the person that I'm reading for. That's the difference. That's, that's very helpful. Yeah. Um, so we'll just wrap up with mentioning what are you doing with clients right now? You do intuitive life path readings, mm -hmm. numerology readings and mm -hmm. intuitive coaching. Yeah. So uh, maybe you can say just a little bit about each one. Yeah. So the intuitive reading and intuitive life path reading, I began calling them that because a lot of times what people are asking for in an intuitive reading, and that's where I connect to my intuition, my higher guidance, and my own spirit guides to get the connection for people of what, what is their soul purpose? What, is their, their, what are their gifts? What are they learning here on their life path? What are the, the lessons that they're learning? What are the um, ways, perhaps, that they would be able to use some of these gifts uh, in, in helping another, in service to another, that would bring them joy, peace, that type of thing. So that's why I've called that the, the life path reading. The numerology reading is where I actually create, I, people will get a, a numerology chart. And that's based actually on people's birth date and birth name. And that's where we look more in depth using numerology as the tool of looking at people's soul purpose, their soul gifts, their life journey. What did I come into this life to learn? What did I come into this life to express? Like what's my mission and my purpose? Um, what are some different things that I can look at at the different timing and cycles in my life? Um, so that's the numerology reading. And then the, the intuitive coaching is where I intuitively am still often very connected to my clients. And, but the difference is the coaching is kind of coaching, mentoring slash teaching, I would say. And a lot of times people will come to me first through a reading and then they want a little bit more in-depth support. 
And the coaching, we might look at what you might call like the blocks or, or what are the fears or, or the concerns that are kind of stopping me on my path? Or how can I get more in tune with my peace and, and my inner joy so that it's easier for me to express my purpose or to, to create that you know, heart-centered business that I want? How can I um, get clear about what my purpose might be or what my gifts are, what I, I'm here to share? And then sometimes, a lot of times in, when I'm working with people, you know, maybe one-on-one -on -one in person or over the phone, I'll suddenly hear guidance for them or, or get some kind of guidance for them. And I'll, I'll, I'll check in with the client and they'll say, yeah, yeah, that's right. Or yes, yes. So that's why I call it the intuitive coaching because it's not always just me. I am still trying to connect with higher guidance and I do some, you know, oftentimes I will get that intuitive hit or that, that just kind of download of, of some kind of information that could possibly help the client on, on their journey, on their path or their healing, whatever you want to call it. So that's, that's what that is. And sometimes people want to know. They specifically sometimes have hired me to teach them, how do I connect to my guides? I'd like to know more about that. Right. How do I develop my intuition? Um, can you help me figure out how to meditate? Can you help me connect to, to spirit and to higher guidance so that I'm, I'm calmer, so that I can hear my higher guidance? Mm. Yeah, wonderful. I mean, you're empowering them to yeah. be able to keep using these tools. Yes. So uh, thank you, Jeanette. Your website is JeanetteHill.com. Yeah. Uh, that's with two N's and two T's, J-E-A-N-N-E-T-T-E-H-I-L-L.com. <laughs> -E -E -L -L Go there and you'll be able to get the readings right from the website. If you're interested in the um, longer term coaching, you can contact Jeanette for a 30-minute complimentary consult. Uh, Jeanette, thank you so much for being here today, and um, thanks for sharing with us about uh, higher guidance and how to connect. Thank you so much, George. Really enjoyed it. Thank you.